Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. In this video I'm going to cover some uh, tips for building more robust surface models in SOLIDWORKS. So when you come to, to rebuild your model or change some dimensions, hopefully it will rebuild and also just be more stable in general. So in no particular order I'll just cover some tips. Pretty much whenever I start a model I will define like the main volumes of the product in, in sketch uh, elevational sketches so in this case I've got one main side elevation sketch you might need a, a plan view and a, and a front elevation as well to capture the main volume so pretty much never put blends or any sort of larger details in this this is like primary base volumes of the main forms so then you've got a nice scaffold to build your model off the next thing I will say is you want to model from primary surfaces and then work into blends so you don't want to in this case this handle's got a, an edge here you don't want to at an early stage add the blend in here because then that will complicate some of the other stuff you've got to do uh, to blend this form into the cylinder I have had various models from other people over the years where they have decided to um, model fillets in early and then they really do have trouble trying to feather things out. So if I had to fill it on here already, on this edge, I wouldn't necessarily know what to do with it at this point. Like does it run out here or does it run out here? So what you want to do is really focus on primary surfaces, make your theoretical edges, and then add blends in. So in this case, this has actually got uh, two levels of blends going on. It's got these larger ones here, like this, which then can get trimmed up with another level of blend going in and then that's all knitted together and that leaves lastly uh, these edges here to be blended so as I said if you had this fillet on from the very beginning um, you've got a complete lack of uh, control as to where that would go so finally I trim that area out and add those two blends there and thickened right so my next tip is once you've you've finished modeling all these surfaces you probably want to turn them into solids so one thing I have picked up on over the years uh, when you work on a model and uh, you've say you've used a knit surface because in a surface knit there is an option to create a solid now uh, I try and avoid using that tool because uh, surface knits there's nothing there to say hey look at me I'm the one that turned that into a solid um, there is a better way to do it which is to insert boss base thicken okay so if we go and have a look at that insert boss base thicken and then you pick your surface body if that is a closed watertight surface body you have an option to create a solid from the enclosed volume and then go okay uh, and you also have options to merge it into other solids etc so I'll just delete that so my, my logic there is that you then have the thicken feature which is much easier to identify in a tree say of um, several hundred features without having to rename anything uh, if you're working through concepts etc where you, you don't really want to have to name every feature it's much easier to identify and there is one other kind of obscure reason I have had a different solid result from a surface knit versus a thicken when if people have used boundary surfaces before and you have merge tangent faces on or merge tangent faces off on one rare occasion I did have the surface knit merge faces in a boundary surface which had I had explicitly said I didn't want it to merge tangent faces because I wanted to have uh, the, use the edges in that for something else okay I'm going off piece there a bit sorry okay so for that tip I would say this tip is to use the insert boss base thicken to solidify your parts okay and that brings me on to my next tip so as you can see here I've modeled a quadrant of the product because it is symmetric around two planes um, again it's the kind of thing you see people um, modeling uh, right across you know something that's meant to be symmetric and there's just ways that errors can creep in there and you end up with asymmetric product there are use cases which I'll 
cover in a second uh, in another tip about why you might want to model a what you like a surface that spans over the center line as uh, as a whole surface rather than modeling a half um, but as you can see here I've got the quadrant so mirror it at once mirror it at twice and knitted those surfaces together and if you knit surfaces together with um, merge entities on it will get rid of uh, the edge as you can see there because that surface is plain arc can merge that into one if it's a an arc again you end up with no edge there if you go merge entities okay and then thickened so as I mentioned in the previous tip uh, about modeling in the model in half or as a quadrant and then mirroring it across in this this case in this model I have actually modeled this main surface as full span right across um, and the reason being there is because I was this was a surfacing exercise where I wanted to end up with the smoothest possible connection didn't want to have any flat spots or peaks in the curvature combs in the surface so I've modeled that as full width rather than modeling it in one half and mirroring it across so if I go in here turn on my curvature combs and increase the scale you can see there uh, I've got nice smooth curvature in that direction so not necessary to do with robustness but more to do with your sanity uh, you know if you have to then just model it full width and there is an option too like if you go okay well what if I want to just model half of the model still you can actually trim once you model this surface in full width you can trim this uh, back to being a half and model half of the model and then at the end when you mirror it across and you go uh, knit, uh, knit the surfaces together and merge entities that will actually remove the uh, edge down the middle here because it knows that that is a trim surface uh, and the other side is identical okay that brings me on to my next um, tip which is sometimes when you're using uh, G2, G2 or G3 constraints you'll want to pre-compose uh, references in a sketch prior to the one that contains the G3 or G2 constraint. SOLIDWORKS is pretty touchy sometimes with using G2 and G3 constraints so you can see what I've got here is so I've got the spline, if we go and edit that, pick that spline, it is a degree 7 spline, so it's got 8 CVs, single span, and on each end we have a G3 constraint, as you can see there. So what I've done is I've pre-composed, as I call it, um, to steal a term out of After Effects, I have pre-made these uh, extra references on each end, so I've got on this end I have a line, on this end I've got a, a section of an arc, okay, and I have built those and defined them in the sketch prior. So what I found over the years is if I had this arc here and I had that defined in this sketch as well, and defined with an angle, if I go and change that angle, then there's a very high chance that one of these constraints here will fall over. Um, so if I exit this, just go into the sketch prior so you can see here I've created that that arc there with a with an angle dimension okay so then inside that sketch here with the actual um, spline on it I've converted the entities out of the sketch prior so therefore this sketch here it's just solving these constraints against this and this sketch entity uh, rather than having to look at the angle and the length as well. I hope that makes sense. But yeah, it can it can be quite a problem, um, especially if you're dealing with like that rebuilt there. There's no problem, just rebuilt. Yeah, so that can be quite a, a problem if you're trying to build uh, models with G3 or G2 continuity and you start having sketches fall over when you rebuild and change geometry higher up the tree. Okay, uh, this tip is about overbuilding surfaces. So 
So this bottle here, it terminates at this line here. But the way I've built it, if you go and have a look here, you know, it's going to be a bit of a nightmare to make like some end-sided surfaces down the bottom here. So what I've done instead is uh, overbuild the this large surface here at the bottom and then trimmed it back. Okay, so that means I don't have to uh, figure out how to create some weird patches here that run down to a point. I mean, I could move this line up, but then I'd still, even if this boundary was further up, I'd still have to maybe create a four-sided surface here and then another one and then another one. So quite often you just have to kind of step back and go, okay, what if I built a bigger surface and then trimmed it back? to get the form I wanted versus creating a whole lot of tiny little patches. So that's quite a, a useful technique that I use quite a bit. So again, on the front of the bottle, uh, that's an overbuilt surface, which is then trimmed back to give me this edge. Okay, rather than trying to create a surface like this sort of um, teardrop shape, uh, the sharper curvature at the top here, that's a three-sided surface, so you probably have to build a fill surface um, and then you probably end up yeah having to trim it back anyway so yeah overbuilt surfaces it's another way to build things and it's more robust generally because you don't end up with a whole lot of patches and extra extra control splines uh, things like that with G2 constraints which again uh, extra things to fall over and last thing from me just to reiterate again um, about keeping your primary surfaces first, then your tertiary surfaces and blends, and then finally um, keep your small fillets right towards the end of the model. Uh, just because if you start adding these up further, then it really can complicate things. So just keep things tidy. And lastly, remember to use your zebra stripes uh, all the time to check your surface uh, quality. There's not enough surf uh, zebra stripe usage in SOLIDWORKS videos in my opinion. So I'm going to wrap this up now. If anybody's got any other sort of surfacing um, issues, things that make their model fall over or they find it always falls over at a certain point or anything like that, um, you can just fire through a comment and I might have a look and see if I can help out with that. So thanks for watching. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Bye.